Hello, I'm Sean Rice from the International Tour of the Adams Family, and this is Living Out of Suitcases. I hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving holiday. We did. We spent the day in Squaw Valley, California, eating, shopping, and caroling. But now we're back to finish up the last few weeks of shows this year. We actually got to sit down here for a week on the West Coast and have a relaxing golden day in Thousand Oaks, California. Thousand Oaks is located in beautiful Ventura County and offers a variety of recreation, leisure, and retail shopping options for the entire family. The city is only 45 miles from downtown Los Angeles and about an hour from Santa Barbara. With over 15,000 acres of open space, 140 miles of multi-use trails, there's an abundance of recreation options in Thousand Oaks, from equestrian trails to hiking, cycling, running, and walking. As someone who's not a big hiker, though, I spend my time enjoying the simpler things. The beauty of the area is striking, and being right there in Highway 101, it's close to many of the backdrops of famous Western movies of the past. The area is also so nice that even the malls are outdoor. Take a stroll through Jan's Market to shop, take in a movie, or enjoy the sun and breeze. While you're there, though, stop in at Karma, a fantastic restaurant offering Indian cuisine for lunch and dinner, including a $10 Indian buffet that has many options to choose from. You can also take in a show at the Civic Arts Plaza, located just a few miles away. According to RoadsideAmerica.com, the Civic Arts Plaza is decorated with a statue installation that was designed to resemble a flowing copper curtain. But when it was finished, the city officials were afraid it might flow right into the traffic on 101, so it was contained to the side of the building. Across the way is the beautiful gardens of the world, a striking monument to commemorate the various cultures of the world. Even in the winter, when everything's not in full bloom, you can walk along the picturesque Japanese gardens and enjoy the koi pond, or see the cascading waterfalls in the French gardens, and finish your visit with a walk through the explosion of color in the English perennial and rose garden. A peaceful and relaxing trip that mirrors the serenity of Thousand Oaks itself. Living out of a suitcase also means that you're usually living on a bus. Now, we travel all over the place. Sometimes our commute between cities is just an hour, and sometimes it's several days worth of driving. It all boils down to spending more time on a bus than spending off of it. It's kind of weird that the bus becomes your permanent home and the hotels just become places you sleep at. A two-show day, a 6 a.m. bus call, and a seven-hour drive into another show means you got to at least learn how to nap on the bus. So, here's my list of the top five essentials you need to make your life on the bus bearable. Number one bus bedding. Everyone has their preference on how they like to sleep on the bus. Now generally you've got two options. You're either a seat sleeper who stretches across the aisles and sleeps on the seats, or you're a floor sleeper who gets right down in there between the seats and sleeps on the ground. Whichever one you are, you're going to need some bus bedding. At the very least, you're going to need a pillow and probably a blanket because it kind of gets cold there on the bus sometimes. If you're a floor sleeper, you might want to look into getting some foam egg crating just to make that floor seem a little less floory. Number two, a power strip. I've said this before. A power strip is your best friend, especially on the bus. Now, you may want to get one to keep in your hotel room and travel with you and one to keep on the bus, especially if your bus has power outlets. Because let me tell you, a long bus ride is going to be hell on all of your electronics. Your laptop, your phone, your iPad, your MP3 player, they're all going to die, especially if you have a seven hour or longer bus trip. So you're going to want something to charge it up to make sure that you have something to do Otherwise, your only option is to stare out the window. Number three, a cup holder. Get yourself a run-of-the-mill $2 plastic cup holder. The section that normally goes in the window and sets along the side of the door can be squeezed into the seat in front of you, creating a little hanger. It makes life so much easier just to be able to keep a drink in there. Heck, I even use it to hang my sunglasses and my hat on. Number four, a bus bag. Get yourself a little carry-on type bag. Something that you can put all the things that you're going to use on the bus ride in. The book you're reading, your laptop, snacks, knitting, whatever. That way you don't have to keep going up into the overhead compartment. You can even hang it off your cup holder if it's not too heavy. Finally, number five, a sweater. It's always nice to have a sweater just for the bus. So if it gets cold on the ride or if you stop somewhere and you need to get off where it's a little chilly, you can just throw it right on. And hey, while you're not using it, it makes a nice little addition to your bus bedding. And there you have it. With these items in hand, your living on the bus should be very homey. Club time again. This month we're reading a book that was suggested by one of our former company members, our touring tutor, Julie. Since she is no longer here to give us a little overview of the book, I'll go ahead and tell you a little about it. This month we're reading Big Fish, A Tale of Mythic Proportions. I think it's a very fitting choice since um, our musical, The Addams Family, uh, was composed by Andrew Lippa, who also composed Big Fish, the musical, which is on Broadway right now. Now, if you don't know the storyline, it follows William Blooms and his search to find out more about his father. All he really knew about him 
him growing up were these tall tales that he used to tell him, and now that his father is dying, he's trying to piece together all these epic myths about his father and try to find the truth in what actually happened during his life. It's supposed to be very, very charming. Um, the movie was great. I loved it. Uh, the play is supposed to be wonderful. Um, I can't wait to see it. Hopefully I get a chance to. And I'm very excited to read the book. If you plan on reading the book or you've already read it and have some opinions about it, please post them down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. everybody in between. I'm Grandma Adams, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the day in the life of Grandma. So I start the day as most people do by waking up in the morning. I'm not really a morning person, so it's a little difficult for me. I'm really more of a night owl, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I wake up, and if it happens to be a travel day, meaning it's when we're traveling to our next venue, I need to pack up all my things and load my luggage on the bus. You might not recognize Grandma Adams. I actually like to wear a disguise. I really don't have the patience for the paparazzi, and as much as I adore my fans, sometimes I need to just get to work. With all my adoring fans, it could get very, very busy. So I like to wear a disguise. If we're not traveling, Grandma gets to sleep in. I enjoy those days. So then, once I get on the bus, I usually enjoy sleeping on the bus. Because like I said, I am not a morning person. Did I mention that? I thought so. So I have my eye mask, and because I'm a cougar, I have a nice leopard print snuggie that keeps me nice and cozy, and I settle in for a nice little nap. Then we travel to our next venue. We'll check into the hotel, and if we have a little bit of time, I might try to work out at the hotel, because Grandma likes to stay in shape. That's the secret to a long life exercise, among other things. So, I'll exercise at the hotel, or if I don't have time, we head to the venue where I might exercise there. Then the next big thing, this is very important. When we're in a new venue, the first thing we have to do is have a company meeting. That's where our stage manager and our company manager tell us about the performance of the night. If there are any cuts or if there are any changes, and our company manager likes to fill us in on any news for the company. So we sit there quietly and take notes, mental notes. Next, we do a sound check. That's where we all put our microphones on and we either sing a little or you speak a little just so that our sound tech can make sure that all the levels are right and that the music's not drowning us out, we're not drowning the music, we can all hear things and everybody's happy. I told him to use his time wisely. Look who's talking. How much time have I got left? Then, I start my preparation of makeup, which takes me about an hour. It takes a long time to be 102. Ta-da! <laughs> so, I do that, and then when it's time for places, I do what I call a articulation warm-up. Beetle bled red, and the other black beetle bled blue. One black beetle bled red, and the other black beetle bled blue. One black beetle bled red and the other black beetle bled blue. So that's my warm up, because Grandma doesn't get to sing in this show, but it's important that you understand what I'm saying. Then, for those of you who've seen the show, you know there's a good chunk of Act Two where you don't see Grams. So, I need to keep myself occupied, which I have a really good time doing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right here. I'm almost done. Okay, okay. <laughs> no matter what I do, I cannot seem to get the frizz out of my hair. 
I tried the VO5 hot oil. I tried the frizzies. Nothing seems to work. They'll never take me alive, you sons of bitches! <laughs> Is this Mother's Funeral Home? I was just looking at your website. I see you have some really nice tombstones. Very, very, very classy. Who's a pretty girl? You're a pretty girl. Who's a pretty girl? Who's a pretty girl? Thanks for joining me on a day in the life of Grandma Adams. See you next time! Thanks for stopping by this week at Living Out of Suitcases. If you like what you saw here today, please like, comment, subscribe, and share with all your friends. We'll be taking a short break here at the show for a few weeks, and so will my vlog. Since I won't be living out of a suitcase while I'm at home, well, technically I will be, anyway. But don't forget to stop by Wednesday for a holiday, Adam's Family Portraits, and next week for Gaming Out of Suitcases. Oh, and as always, if you know of any place that I should go in the upcoming cities that we're going to be going to when we come back, please let me know down in the comments. Bye!